All right, guys, so let's pretend that you really want to dig into customizing your Nest Maker, uh, your game projects, and you don't like my code at all because let's face it, my code is a mess, man. If you are a if you're a great assembly programmer, you're going to look at your Picasso and I'm child finger painting. I never will pretend that I'm a great assembly programmer. My code is inefficient. It's ugly. It's it's desperate. Um, but I, I, I am the slamming together things to make it work kind of guy. Uh, you might be way better than me or you might know somebody who's way better than me and you still want to use Nestmaker because you love the sort of WYSIWYG but you want to completely get in and gut the scripts. I mean, on a fundamental level, we're not talking about just like changing a couple AI scripts like we've done in, in these tutorials. We're talking about like, I want to completely gut the way that the memory management works here. I want to completely destroy the way that the, the, the memory map and, and everything like that and how the banks are handled and stuff like that. I want to just, just kill this thing. Um, or, you know, I'm about to start making some significant changes and I don't want to screw things up or more likely what's going to happen is you guys are going to get to a point where we're going to about to, we're going to release for, you know, 5.0 or 4.1.9 or something like that. And it's going to be a different new version and it's going to have a total fundamental base uh, of scripts that are different. And that's happening right now. Like some of you guys made games with 4.0.11 or 4.0.6. And now we've got this new version and your games won't work in this anymore because the code base is different. So you have to keep both versions of the tool. And we want to prevent that. That was one of the main big updates. We had to completely revamp the way that our, our, our scripts were handled in this in order to facilitate a method where you can actually save the scripts alongside your project, kind of. So that way, when we update versions or you start making huge tweaks to how the code works, you still have a version of the scripts that works with your old projects uh, as we move forward. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. It's actually pretty freaking easy to do. Um, and this will sort of free you guys up to really start exploring playing with the scripts without worrying that you're going to break everything forever. Uh, and worst case scenario, if you do break everything, you could just download a new version of the software, get a fresh install, um, and then you know your activation code still works, so you start from scratch that way. But we're, hopefully we don't have to result to that. Let's take a look at this. What we're going to do is we've got this, this uh, backup scripts button right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for a folder to backup, and it's going to backup all of that folder, the entire folder, all of its contents. And it's meant to backup all of the base scripts for all the modules that you might build, build based on that, that base set of scripts. So where ours is located is right here. In Nestmaker, Game Engine Data, routines you see this folder called basic and i'm going to double click on that i'm not going to click on anything in here right now this is the folder i want to back up all this stuff my bank data my data load scripts my initialization scripts all the module scripts all the stuff we've worked with so far the physics scripts the system the variables etc and my main folder which this just points to a main folder that's inside there so this is literally all of the scripts that could possibly run for this module unless i create new ones this is, this is everything that we've looked at so far I'm going to hit save. And so now that's the, the folder that's going to be backed up and where it's going to zip these all up into a zip file. And where am I going to put that zip file? I've made a project zips. It doesn't matter where you put it. I made a project zips folder for this. Now I'm going to call this basic um, Joe's edits and I'm going to hit save. And now it needs to know where am I going to store this location route? I'm going to call it basic Joe's edits. If I just call it basic, it's all it's doing is overwriting the folder that's already there if I give it the same name. So I'm going to include the root define and I'm going to hit OK. Zip, cre zip script created successfully. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import. Oh, I'm going to run project script. And I'm going to find that zip scripts, basic Joe's edit. I'm going to hit open. And what that just did was script execution successful. If I look at my game engine data routines, now I've got a new script of, of uh, a new folder of scripts called Joe's edit. And it just backed up everything. It just literally backed up everything that makes Nestmaker run on a game level. Um, and... Oops. 
And what's cool about that is if I go to my project settings and I go to script settings, you can see it changed my route to Joe's edits. So all I'm gonna do uh, is I'm going to, these are all still set to basic, unfortunately. And I wanna put all my scripts that are defined here into this new folder. I'm gonna update my route. And I clicked on that and I hit update route. And now look, everyone says basic Joe's edit, basic Joe's edit. So now, what's if I, say, if I were to save this, what's amazing about what I just did was, I can start messing with all of the scripts in Basic Joe's edit. I mean, completely gut the damn thing. I could completely eviscerate what's there, and I'm not messing with the original uh, with the original script. So then, all I've got to do is load up the original, import the original scripts, and I now can be back to square one. So if we develop an entire new set of scripts, that entire new set of scripts that doesn't work the way that this does anymore, and all all of these are obsolete. All you have to do is then load up the basic Joe's edit scripts with your game and it'll work forever. Like it'll continue to work even if we've made updates. You're not using those new updates. You're using this basic Joe's edit uh, scripts. So that's a way that you can build uh, back up your scripts folder. And now that's a that's a pretty major update. That's backing up the entire scripts folder. That's a backing up, um, you know, that that's for when we're like updating to a whole new complete version, like how we said, oh, these won't work anymore with this new code base. Okay, that's for that. Or if you really want to gut the script, but more commonly, you're going to want to build, say, a module. So for instance, if I wanted to turn this into, you know, it's a side scroller, I've already got the base for it, but I want to make like, you know, a Contra module. Okay, cool. So what I would do is, you know, I would, I would get, be in my scripts and I would, I'd be probably completely changing, you know, what the tile collisions do for that type of game and maybe what the AI does. You know, I would change the labels. So instead of, I wouldn't have this collectible score thing, I'd have, you know, which gun you have, whatever. Okay, so then, you know, one of the tiles would change what, what weapon you have and then you know you'd need to create a variable that would keep track of what gun you have and maybe you'd make a constant that would be like starting gun and it would, it would be you know a number and then you could test things you'd be creating all these additional things you'd go into project labels you'd go to uh, ai um action types and you'd change what these do because obviously because something's not going to move in eight directions so you don't need that one so you get rid of that one you make another one you change the label you go to script settings you change the ai for for that one um so that way it matches what what the top what the what the label says and then you know you, you get the idea like i'm making all these major changes I, I do a whole bunch of new script defines like i add a timer or something that works in a certain way so I make a new script to find and a script that handles that and and I've done all these new things that basically I've got a whole new module it still works within the same code base it still uses the same physics engines it's still or you know I've I've done the same tricks I did in some of the other tutorials where Yes, I've, I, you know, I've made a custom folder, but it's still living within my base scripts. It still basically works on the same foundational code. That's probably going to be more common. And now you want to make the quote unquote, my Contra like module. Okay, that's super simple. All that's going to do is it's going to take all the things I just mentioned, all these defines, all these um, script defines, all the, the labels, all the, the variables, all the constants, the, you know, all that stuff. That's that's what a module is. So in order to do that, so let's say I've made all those changes I just talked about, um, and I go to export project module like this. And I select all of the things that that make up my project module, probably all of them for every case. Like you probably want to overwrite all this stuff for every new project module you create. So I'm going to select all of them. I'm gonna, and this is this tells you this is what is going to be exported in that module. I hit OK and hit OK. And I've got a folder for modules right here. And I would call this like base my dumb contra like game okay and i hit save okay so now i've i've now made a new module so check this out when i export this and i start a new game if i go to file new check it out my dumb contra like game is now one of the choices and all that's going to do is it's going to create a, a, a new project that includes all of those 
special defines and extra variables and extra constants and the labels specifically that you made for that module and all that stuff. Um, it's still using that same code base, but your, your defines are all set up. So that way it will work, you know, the way that you had created that sort of contra module in your mind. So, you know, that in mind and how easy it is to start seeing this, we should be able to see somebody say, Oh, I took this scrolling platformer module and I tweaked it and I made a game that runs a lot more like Mega Man. So this is sort of my Mega Man like module. And you know, this, this performs in that same way. It's like a, you know, a scrolling, uh, uh, running gun type module we'll we'll say that instead of mega man you know we were it's a run and gun type module and you could easily create that or you could take the shooter and instead of it's it's not a spaceship anymore it has more of car physics to it you know and maybe your player controls the 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 speed of the 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 scroll uh just with the input keys so you know then you could call that your um you know that's your racing tutorial or your racing module. So hopefully we're going to start to see user modules that take the existing modules, start tweaking them, maybe writing a little bit of code here and there, change the labels, you know, whatever, and releasing a module that functions and showing us how they work. So that's a, that, that's a lot of information about the advanced uses here, but hopefully, you know, you're not scared to start making new modules, your own custom modules. And now you can see how we're going to prevent um, from version to version, this problem of your projects not carrying forward. So that's how to back up your scripts and how to create new modules based on that code base.